Hello, I am Brandy Victorian with The Hollywood Reporter, and this is THR Presents with the cast of Party Down. We are joined by four of the amazing cast members of this comedy here today. Uh, Adam Scott, Ken Marino, Zoe Chow, and Tyrell Jackson-Williams. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Uh, I want to start with Adam and Ken uh, because you've been a part of this series uh, right from the beginning. And to that point, can you believe uh, that you've been with Henry and Ron for this amount of time, albeit there was, you know, a bit of a gap in between there. But also, you know, what made you say yes to revisiting uh, these characters after so many years between season one and two? I, I mean, it was uh, it was such an incredible, like, uh, unexpected gift. I mean, for a long time, we talked about doing something with this a group again, trying to get the party down team together. And it, and and then um, at a certain point, I was like, it's I guess it's not going to happen. And then as soon as I gave up hope, something happened. So there's a little moral there. Just give up hope and things will happen, I suppose. But it was incredible, you know, to get to, you know, get together with, um, just to work with Adam again and, and to, you know, see Ryan and, Jane and 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 Martin and everybody and like and and it just it was it was such a wonderful like reunion to hang out with all these people that I had such a wonderful time with ten years ago to get to do it again was a gift. I think it it wasn't necessarily a matter of if anyone wanted to do it. It was just a matter of when and how. We all have been talking this in the entire thirteen years since we finished shooting season two. We've been talking about doing more for a while. It was a movie maybe, and then started thinking about another season. And then it went away, like Ken said. And and then around early 2021, we started seriously talking about it. And Stars, who's been really great through the whole process, kind of jumped in and and got really enthusiastic as well. So it uh, then it was just a matter of scheduling and trying to find a time where all of these super busy people were available. And... Uh, and so we found a six week period where everyone could do it. And and uh, and everyone, you know, everyone jumped in immediately just as soon as it became real. We were we were all on board. And I love with season three, we have the addition of Saxon and Lucy. Um, and I love how they represent like this new generation of career aspirations. Saxon's a content creator. Nobody knows what that means. Um, you know, Lucy, food artist. Uh, celebrity chef Zoe and Tyrell, can you talk about joining uh, this amazing ensemble? Um, and also what your characters add to the mix? Me and Zoe talk about this all the time, about how uh, nerve wracking it was to sort of jump into, um, you know, this really well established and, and uh, well established thing. But everybody was so warm and welcoming and, you know, encouraging that it, it, it wasn't, there was no added stress. Um, it was a, it was a really nice sort of, um, they didn't throw us in the deep end. They gave us time to adjust. Um, but I think that it's really interesting that, uh, um, me and Zoe's characters sort of represent the new version of the sort of Hollywood grind and how it's evolved over time. Um, and it's, it looks different, but it's not really different than it always has been. I mean, Saxon is just essentially a struggling actor, but he's struggling to act like himself online for children. Um, yeah. And I, just to echo what Tyrell said, I, I, I think we, we really bonded over being the new kids and not wanting to F up something that was in our minds, perfect. Um, you know, there. I when I found out that they were going to add uh, a couple new characters to the cast, I was like, "That's a terrible idea." <laughs> it's already a perfect ecosystem. <laughs> Whoever gets cast is going to screw it up. And um, but then I was like, "Can I go in for it?" Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah. And then yeah, my my boyfriend. I mean, that you all have heard this many times, but my boyfriend has watched both seasons the first two seasons six times each. So I am familiar with the uh, loyal fan base. And so, you know, I knew this was a highly anticipated return, but um, yeah, it, it all these people have become, you know, some of my new favorite people in the whole world. And, and it's been, it was so fun to shoot season three and, and to play the lunatic that is Lucy Dang. And it was cool to also be the first character 
to actually talk about food um, yeah. in the catering company. <laughs> so <laughs> I feel like we lucked out. I mean, you know, you never know on any show, you know, if somebody new comes in, if it's going to, the chemistry is going to be the same, if it's going to work out right. And then we get, you know, Zoe and Tyrell and Jennifer and it's, you know, it's like they were there from day one and they're so talented as actors. And then as human beings, they're just delightful and wonderful. And you want to spend as much time with them as possible, which is exactly the feeling that we had 10 years ago with the original crew, you know? So it was, it was kind of crazy that it all, you know, just worked out so beautifully. It felt crazy that they hadn't been along the entire time. It really did. It, they, it was just an immediate kind of puzzle piece falling into place and it felt complete finally, you know? I love that. I know. I know. <laughs> oh boy. You know, uh, the main cast is so solid and dynamic, um, but there's also been just incredible recurring characters and guest stars, you know, over the years. I think J.K. Simmons and Nick Offerman were like two of my <laughs> favorites um, over the over time. You know, what have been some of your favorite guest storylines or just guest stars who were super fun to film with? I mean, for me, I, I got to direct an episode this season and uh, I got to, you know, work with, we all got to work with Bobby Moynihan and I've always been a big fan of Bobby. So like to get to be in scenes with him and direct him and stuff and like just to watch his process was a lot of fun for me. So that, that's one of my faves. I really loved uh, James Marsden this season. He did a great job and he's- oh, yeah. He's so, so funny and such a kind of kind of a s sneaky coming around through the uh, through the side door funny and just so incredibly sharp and and really light on his feet and and such a great actor all around. It's, it's really fun to just sit there and watch him on set uh, uh, work his way through these scenes playing this incredible douchebag it was it was really really fun to to watch him the truth is is like there's so there were so many great ones like like i, I, I would yeah. probably gush about every, everybody Fran <laughs> kranz was great this this yeah. season in episode one he was terrific everybody i mean you know we we're always super super lucky with with guest stars and Ken, I want to jump into uh, you directing, you know, this season. Uh, the prize winner's luau was a wild ride <laughs> from, uh, you know, sex and not- Quite a trip. Yeah, it was a trip, exactly. <laughs> the expanded creative consciousness. Yeah, man, um, yeah. You know, <laughs> can you talk about stepping behind the scenes and like, you know, your approach to that episode? Uh, you know, that was, I mean, I I enjoyed directing and I, I had the- um, you know, the, the, the privilege to direct the final episode of season two many years ago. And it was sort of, I think, might have been my first TV directing gig. Um, and so I was excited to do it again. Um, you know, it's easy when you have incredible actors who, you know, know their characters so well. And so, it, it, you know, it's, it's just, you just try to, you try to throw out some ideas and then just like stay out of the way and let them, you know, do their thing. But it was, it, yeah, the biggest challenge was we shot, we, it was an outdoor, we were shot in uh, uh, Malibu and uh, we didn't have a lot of daylight and it was windy. And so the weather was more of a concern. My biggest concern on, on that, on that uh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, the entire was, episode was out, outside. Yeah, for the most part, except for Zoe and mine and Zoe's stuff. And that, that was stuff that we were like, we would, you know, like sort of, that was- um, In the tent. In the safety. Where we would yeah. shoot those when we had to. And so I would be like, go, 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 go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I set a timer. Zoe can tell you about that. I, I use a timer on set. He to, does. To to stay on schedule because I sometimes get lost. I like actors a lot and I like to kind of just keep going. So yeah. I he set doesn't a timer. like keeping us on ice. <laughs> yeah, I don't like anybody on ice. I like everybody just to stay nice and lathered and keep going and okay. going and going. But I sometimes lose track of time. And so I always have a timer, but um, sometimes I make the mistake of showing the actors the timer and going, we have two and a half minutes left. And I did that with Zoe and... Um, uh, <laughs> it was psychotic. It was startling, I think. <laughs> I, I felt like a, a camelback 
uh, like to just like wall acting with Ken because I was just like I don't have the stamina for this. <laughs> Sorry. Like, and again, and again, we'll roll, we'll roll, we'll roll. I'm fine with him keeping a timer. The thing I don't like is him saying I want to keep all the actors lathered. <laughs> I did that's have the, old, the that's only fair. thing that that's I, I, I you didn't let that handle. fly by, Adam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're all workhorses. It's just a metaphor, guys. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Adam, you also get, uh, came back as a producer for the series. Can you talk about why that was important uh, for you and any type of you know creative direction that you know that you provided in that role? Um, I was a producer on uh, season two uh, back in the day, about 13 years ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, I, you know, the, the Dan and John Embaum, the showrunner, um, and Rob and Paul, the creators, we're all friends and um, have known each other a long time. And, um, and, uh, we've just been in touch over the years and trying to find the right time to do it. And, uh, and they were generous enough to include me in, in those conversations about like when and, and how to do it. And so I, m my thing about producing is I'm just there to help wherever I can. And those guys, it's their show. And so I just let them, um, uh, uh, utilize me wherever they can and whenever they can. I just can tell them to consider me on call to help whenever and however. It's basically, that's what I think producing should be, is being as helpful as possible at all times. And so that's just what I what I try to do with with uh, with the show. I remember when uh, we all got an email as uh, from Adam as producer, and he's like, guys, I'm the producer on this. Just remember to be on time and stay lathered. That's right. <laughs> and then Ken stole that from me and started using it. That's why I don't like so it when he says it, because it's mine. <laughs> I feel like I'm answering my next question. Uh, just seeing You're not getting lathered. <laughs> <laughs> lathered? <laughs> I'm going to merge this away from that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, season two um, of Party Down has 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Season three, 95%. Like, I think that's absolutely remarkable. Um, and they just social media and people are so, you know, hypercritical. You know, what would you say is the secret? You know, I think besides everyone can relate to, you know, working a job they hate while they're trying to get their dream job. But, you know, what is your secret sauce, would you say? Zoe? I was, I was thank you, Adam lathered and ready to go <laughs> this answer i was thinking about this question um and i think that you know besides it being laugh out loud funny there are a lot of other ingredients that go into the making of the show there's so True much Jeff answer yeah <laughs> uh there I am always moved when I watch any any of the seasons by the the moments of tenderness and that the to see like the way this motley crew takes care of each other in their own way gets me every time. And I also think there's romance. It gets really weird and really dark. And I I just think, yeah, you know, it it, it is undeniably a funny show, but there's so much more to it. Um, and I, I, when I watched the show, the first, you know, two seasons back in the day, I felt like less alone when I watched the show, because I do feel like the world is nuts. Asinine things happen all the time. People are lunatics. And, you know, so it was nice to, it felt affirming to watch the show. I think people feel seen like, you know, it, like the, the, the m most of life is trying to achieve to, to, you know, trying to achieve something, but like that, that's, that's the goal. But like most of your life is like the time in between that and who you spend that time with. And like, people can relate to that. And, you know, I, I think we, we all have those friends or those coworkers that we've worked with in our lives where we're like, this is not the thing I want to do, but I've hung out with these people more than I've 
spend time, you know, anywhere else. And you, you, they, they become a family and you become, you get to know these people. And um, that's what I feel like party down is. And that's why I feel like people relate to it so much because we've all had that experience and we've all met, spent time with these people. Yeah. Failure. I think a lot of life ends up being negotiating failure or what you perceive as failure in yourself or other people or whatever. And I think that's, guaranteed like Ken and Zoe were just saying that's something that everyone can connect to is failure of some sort and how it makes you feel and how you kind of pick up and carry on uh you know from that and 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 who you experience that failure with is I think the is like what's so interesting about this show it's like you know, everybody's watching you fail and there's just, you know, you have to stand next to them and serve hors d'oeuvres or you have to, you know, like it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's something very relatable, I think. Yeah. I it's also a, think, oh, sorry, Tyra, go. That's fine. Uh, no, I think that's one of the magical things about the show is that it, it does a spectacular job of sort of Trojan horsing in um, caring about these crazy people. It's their, like, everyone is insane and that's hilarious, but when you get to one of those uh, sweet moments or, or genuine moments that, that Zoe and, and uh, Ken and Adam are talking about, it you actually do really care about these people. It, it's not just like, oh, I'm. It's great to see them. You know, unfortunate things happen to them. You actually do genuinely care about these people because it, it, it. That's how it is when you're, you know, working towards a goal and you're spending time around the same people every day they could be annoying and they can be crazy, but when it comes down to it, you do care about them. And that's a testament to also just John M. Baum's writing of these characters in this world. Like he captures it in such a beautiful way. He's such an incredible writer. Mm. And um, he didn't miss a beat after, you know, 10 years of not doing it or 11. Like the, the third season just feels like, you know, the third season of Party Down it just so happens that 10 years pass. But like John's writing is, Beautiful. Yeah, and it's so cool how everyone takes turns playing the bad guy. And then in the next episode or in the next scene, you're rooting for them. Like they are, it, 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 I'm so impressed by how fleshed out all these people are and how individual they are. Um, and they're, you know, deeply flawed, but you're still rooting for them, like Tyrell said. Uh, and the season three finale, you know, ended with uh, kind of some cliffhangers. Um, you know, we're like, who owns the company? <laughs> Number one, um, you know, that there's this unexpected reunion uh, with Henry and Casey, you know, is there any news of season four? Any, you know, hopes for where storylines might take, uh, take us in the future? I mean, we don't know anything. Uh, Stars has been amazing throughout the, you know, letting us do it in the first place. And then uh, they've been so terrific of putting the, getting the show out there and making people aware of it and stuff. Um, but as far as the season four goes, we we don't know. We haven't heard anything, but w everyone would love to do it. Uh, I know Lizzie would love to do it as well. And so we're all kind of crossing our fingers both to, to uh, for, you know, the, the network to pick it up and for us to find a time where everyone's available to do it because we're all we're all anxious to do more. Well, I wanted to ask a random question a la Henry. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I think we are, right? Are... I feel like the, yeah, this just... point, we're not, then what, <laughs> yeah. what are we doing? Exactly. <laughs> right? This is yeah. this is where the fun really starts, right now. Yeah, between the other things. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fun is between the other experiences. We're we're having fun. That's yes. exactly right. So much fun. Well, I want to thank you all so much for your time. I love the series, laughed the entire way uh, through, especially this last season. So I thank you so much for being here and for this special episode of THR Presents. Uh, thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Brandy. Thanks. Thank thank you. You. I'm going to go get lathered up. Bye. Okay, here I go too. <laughs> We're all going to go get lathered.